everyone. Welcome to the Open Plant Connect Edition Update 8 Fireside Chat. I'm Amanda Brewer, Product Marketing Manager for Open Plant, and I'm here today with the Open Plant Product Management Team, Abbas Ali, Aaron Wolf, and Scott Walker, to talk to you about some of the great new functionality available with the latest update of Open Plant. So Abbas, tell us, what's new for the modeling tools in this release? Uh, thanks, Amanda. Uh, I'm very excited to be talking about Connect Update 8 release uh, as our team has been working to implement uh, feature updates, uh, workflow improvements, and in general, making overall Open Plant Connect uh, edition suite of products more effective and ensuring uh, productivity for our users uh, on projects, uh, not just in standalone environment, but also on connected uh, digital twin workflows through Open Plant's uh, integration with the plant site. Uh, for modeling tools, I can go over some highlights uh, for detailed description of changes and what is new. Uh, please do review uh, the product readmes and uh, release uh, announcements. Let's start with some quick updates on component placement operations in update 8. Uh, we now support parametric cells as well as RFA files to create custom equipment. Custom component created using these types of cell files can be checked into plant site and behaves like regular open plant components. Uh, for editing and uh, replacing the cells, you can use drop command and get the new cell file to replace the existing ones. Or you can turn on configuration setting to edit these cell files parametrically inside Open Plan Modeler. Uh, this will let you select a different variation or update the parameters for graphics created using uh, microstation parametric cells. Currently for RFAs, you can only select a different variation while editing and not change parameters, but can also replace uh, the uh, complete cell graphics if you have to. Uh, for this reason, for now, uh, the editing ability is made uh, as an optional configuration out of the box. There is now a new example workspace added with realistic tagging conventions. Uh, example of rare ribbon menu customizations, better isometric style configuration, and more uh, report templates. Uh, the example files are similar to what we started shipping with Update 7, but now uh, you can use these files, both PNID and Modeler, to get an idea out of how data looks like and sync these to a plan site for training purposes. In Pipeline Manager, we can now launch the ISO Sheet Manager without having need uh, to select Pipeline first. Uh, you can then select uh, pipelines and ISO sheet manager as all are listed there. Once you generate an ISO, you can change styles and update configuration directly uh, from the ISO extractor processing window that runs in session with Open Plant uh, Modeler. Another usability update is improvement in placing uh, pipes and other components with respect to elbow center point in particular, and in general uh, from active placement port points uh, for components. Now you can move the Acura origin to center point and, if, and give distance from which you want to start placing other uh, components. Uh, we have continued our focus on plant site uh, integrated workflows in update A uh, release. Uh, you can generate reports that cover the whole project and not just the data in the current DGN. You need to be connected um, you need to be in the connected mode to run such reports. In uh, our external reports dialog, an option is added to switch to project-wide reports by selecting on this cloud uh, icon. Uh, once you do that, icons for those reports change, uh, which are marked as to be designed for use in project-wide scenarios as well. Uh, let's run this bill of material report. And as you can see, uh, although I do not have any data checked out into the DJ, and I'm, I'm able to generate a BOM for the whole project. In update seven, uh, a feature was implemented to import tag instances from an external XLS file. We could only create non-graphical work breakdown structures, uh, tags via this method in update seven. Uh, this has been enhanced in update eight, and now we can import both graphical and non-graphical tags. Once you select the file, the new instances are displayed in the import instances dialog. Here, the data can be viewed. Uh, also, if there are any existing tags, uh, they are displayed in separate existing uh, tab. Uh, you can select which ones you would like to import to plant site and reserve these tags for the project. Log file details all the data imported and identifies if any issues were reported. Uh, these tags can be now seen in plant site browser. If I launch consistency manager, I can also view these tags there. And note that I get indication that these are not used either in PNID or uh, modeler. This would be typical at, at the start of the project where the line list, equipment list, or valve list, uh, uh, for instance, can be imported to generate a tagged item list. We can place components and browse to these tags and assign the respective tag 
uh, and associated data with this uh, component. So this is a quick way to import uh, a tag uh, list along with the properties data into plant site. Uh, there are other workflow improvements around document reservation and read-only snapshot feature workflow requirements that cater for multi-user scenarios where designers may be working in both offline uh, and, and connected modes. In update 8, uh, you can also get detailed iModel connection info, uh, properties, and other DGN-related attributes information in message center by running a key in, uh, which can uh, be helpful in uh, different uh, uh, situations. These are some really great updates, Abbas. What about Open Plan Support Engineering? What's new there? Open Plan Support Engineering is uh, available as a separate install, as well as uh, you can select to enable it within Open Plan Modeler. Uh, and engineering support ribbon gets added with full functionality of uh, support en engineering. Let me quickly mention a few updates. You can now choose to run the placement of supports or assemblies in a default selection mode, uh, which lets users select the placement points and assembly type. And after that, all catalog selections are done automatically. We basically query catalogs for all the parts and pick the first record that matches the placement uh, size criteria. This will let user place supports quickly uh, who do not intend to design the supports at certain stage of the project, but still want to occupy physical space. Uh, also, now you can create isometric description uh, for the assemblies that are used in isometric output uh, instead of individual component description. A new field has been added in the properties dialog for this uh, purpose. A new structural steel catalog has been added uh, based on standards and specifications used in India uh, for users who are doing customizations. Um, a content development manual has been added in the uh, SDK examples folder, which contains uh, example scripts. Uh, and uh, other detailed information to assist users in uh, building their own uh, support uh, com uh, components. One other uh, notable thing uh, which we have been promising as part of our common modeling theme in update eight, uh, you will have the option to include uh, BRCM modeling tools inside Open Plant Modeler to help you do modeling of raceway uh, systems in same environment. Scott will be sharing uh, more details on this when he talks about integrated design workflows and Bentley Raceways and Cable Management. Thanks, Abbas. So let's go to Scott. What are some of the new improvements with respect to in the integrated design workflows and other updates in Bentley Raceway and Cable Management for this new release? As Abbas said, we have uh, integrated Bentley Raceway and Cable Management's Raceway and Underground tools into Open Plant Modeler. And this makes it convenient for you to design your raceway systems, making the cabling between your uh, equipment uh, while avoiding clashes with piping or other equipment. Let's take a look at how this works uh, within the software. In Open Plan Project Administrator, you can enable Bentley Raceway and Cable Management for any work set, which enables the Raceway and Underground System design tools inside of Open Plant Modeler. We can then launch Open Plant Modeler, where we should now have access to all of Bentley Raceway and Cable Management's Raceway design tools to place cable tray and other systems. You even have access to the underground system tools to create trenches and duct bank. In this example, we are connecting to and extending an existing cable tray to complete the routing. If you want to perform cable routing, you will need to switch to your Bentley Raceway and Cable Management application and open your Raceway and Equipment Design file. You can then do an iModel import to place the electrical junction boxes for the mechanical equipment that require cable connections. We also made a nice enhancement with the iModel import that allows you to define a property in your open plant schema to specify the location of where the electrical junction box should be placed relative to the mechanical equipment, which avoids any potential clashes. You can then import your cable list from Excel and update the database to prepare for cable routing. You can then use the cable manager to run automatic cable routing on the project after which you'll be able to produce any of your required construction documents and reports. While Bentley Raceway and Cable Management Update 5 contains several different enhancements, one of the key things that we did was to make it fast and easy to design divider systems inside your cable trays. Let's take a look at how this works. 
One of the common challenges that our users faced was knowing in advance how to divide their raceway systems in such a way that the section sizes would allow for the maximum number of cables to be routed. You had to employ a kind of trial and error process of setting it one way and routing your cables to see what would happen. If you didn't have enough capacity for a particular voltage, you would have to keep adjusting the divider settings until you got the best possible result. Now in update five, however, we introduced a new dynamic option that allows the software to automatically calculate the section sizes needed to route the maximum number of cables possible by taking into consideration any cable priorities that you have set. When you run automatic cable routing, the software determines the section sizes needed for every divider that you have set to the dynamic size option. And you can view the results in the Raceway Fill dialog to see what your section sizes should be set to and what the calculated fill percentages are for each section created by the divider. This new workflow avoids the need for trial and error and makes it fast and efficient to specify your divider sections. Thanks, Scott. So, Aaron, what's new on the deliverable side of Open Plant? Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, we've been busy on the Open Plant PID front. So first, we put some effort into making the pipeline and instrument instrument placement workflow more efficient, locating those back to the component gallery while keeping project relationships available and standard preferences. And you can see how the placement routine has been modified while keeping important data at your fingertips and standard preferences throughout. You can also see how the instrument loop placement now is easier as well and includes the instrument tags will inherit from the loop ID, which is very nice. So we've also included some functionality to track components in log files for any sync errors that may occur. You'll see that now. We track the component instance ID of components. So if there are any duplicate tags or any problems, we can track down the errors and correct it rather than lose any data. Uh, you can see in the message center that there are sync errors and users can now go to the log file, find the instance ID for any component that may have a problem. And from there, we can use a key in to browse and then zoom into the problematic components and correct it in component properties. So here you can see finding that instance ID, and then we can go type a key in to find and correct the problematic component. So in addition to that, uh, the announcement that Abbas made about project-wide reporting and more comprehensive to-from reports, uh, specifically on the PNID side, along with those which are vital to producing PNIDs, we've also added the capability to have to from data on any pipeline terminators. What about with Open Plant Isometrics Manager? What's new there? I'll be glad to show you. So one thing we've done to speed up on the fly isometric creation is giving you the capability to get isometric styles and style editor from inside the in session isometrics processor dialog. We've also worked really hard to keep up with the ProjectWise team by making sure we support back and forth updates to the ProjectWise managed workspace for isometric styles. There are configuration variables that can be set to make sure an admin can update the managed workspace from OPIM, as well as for users to make sure OPIM checks for any updates from ProjectWise. I'm also excited to show some of our design states workflow. Uh, we've released a technical preview of this that allows users to control the isometrics release now by pushing isometric production through the correct style that matches the design state of the pipeline and components. So here, uh, and we've also federated the OPIM login with Bentley IMS as well. So finally, for Open Plan Orthographics Manager, so we've added more capability to using MicroStation dynamic views, specifically using that as the HLR, hidden line removal engine inside of Open Plan Orthographics Manager. You can see the output is more accurate and recognizes components better. 
and users can control level settings here as well. But as you can see now, we've also made changes to table reports available in Orthographics Manager. Users can input any property and change the properties of the tables much easier in order to dial in your drawings much quicker. So here you can see making changes to the labels, to column widths, and choosing the properties you want to display and uh, very quickly rerun your drawings and see the output changes. One other note uh, on reports is that users can export them to Excel from inside Orthographics Manager as well. So data that normally is available to produce on your drawing can be exported and be able to be used by other project participants that, that don't have access to the drawing files themselves. Thanks, Aaron. Scott, you had some deliverable updates in Bentley Raceway and Cable Management as well, didn't you? We have indeed added a new deliverable that can make the construction phase of routing cable faster and easier than before. We have provided a new kind of cable route report that captures an isometric image of the cable route taken and embeds that image in the report for each unique cable. This gives the user a visual representation of the path that the cable needs to take through the raceway systems. So instead of having to cross-reference raceway IDs from the report with various drawings to decipher the path that the cable needs to take, you can get a quick snapshot of the actual path and instantly have an idea of how it needs to be routed. Thanks, Scott. This has been great. And thank all of you guys for giving us a look at what's new in Open Plan Connect Edition Update 8. Thank you all for joining us. Just a reminder that our Year in Infrastructure Conference is going digital this year. So join us on October 21st for the start of the conference. For more updates on Open Plan, we'll be having an Accelerate series in November. So stay tuned for more news on that. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you soon.